Hello everyone. Um, I am Susan Budge. I am actually the CEO and co-founder here at Kiwi Lean. I'm going to give everyone a moment to jump on actually before I get too, too into the depth of things. I hope everyone's enjoying your Saturday so far. Um, it's actually a really beautiful day today. I hope it's a beautiful day where you are. Hello Jennifer, Jennifer, Caroline, how are you guys? So I was really excited, of course, I'm always, I always look forward for a chance to talk about play and creativity and all of that stuff. So of course, when the creative partners at, were doing this event and asked if I would be, you know, a special guest, I said, sure, why not? Um, because I always love to, to talk about this topic. It's, a, it's something that, of course, I, is really close to my heart. And I think that it's something that all of us can relate to one way or another. So I'm super excited about that. Hello, Tracy, Brandy, Caroline, hello. Okay, I think a couple of you guys are jumping on, good. Hopefully you've enjoyed the classes so far. I know you guys got a full schedule planned ahead of you today. So that's always fun. Um, okay, so what are we gonna talk about? Well, <laughs> the topic was, what does it mean uh, to play to create? And I just really wanted to break down that just a little bit with you. And then of course, I, I thought while I had you guys in this time, um, I can answer any questions that hopefully I am able to catch here in the comments. Um, maybe what I'll do is actually pull it up on Facebook too, just to make sure that I, it's a little bit bigger than my phone helping me um, get that. And then um, just thought I would go over some paper picking tips because I think that that's one of the things that I get asked most about as well. So um, yeah, okay, so play to create. Here are some thoughts that I have. If you actually take those two words, play and create, right? Let's start with play. I think we talk about create, creativity, creating. All of us are kind of similar what that interprets to be, but play in the same sense, you know, I think we know what play is, right? Play is like a, a, a sense of an attitude. It's, you know, doing something. There we go. Let me put my do not disturb on really fast. There we go. Okay. So it's definitely doing something, of course, fun. And if you think about all the times that you have played, right? Whether, I think a lot of times when we think of the word play, we think of children. Children playing outside. They go play with their friends. But of course, there is no age limit to play. And when we started with the play to create system, what we really, really realized what we were doing, for any of you guys that might not know, we used to call it framing. But when we actually started to kind of tune into what we were doing, we realized that we were actually inviting play into the creative process. And the reason why play is such a valuable aspect of creativity in itself is because play is a sense of discovery, exploration, it's meant to have fun, um, and you're just supposed to discover, right? And creativity is in and, in and of itself that too. Creativity is taking components that you have in front of you and discovering with them, reinventing what you can create out of them, um, making it your own. Um, and of course, you should be having fun in the process. But yet, what has happened a lot with the act of creating is that we get overwhelmed and we feel inadequate and we, which all robs us of some of that fun, right? The funness of it. <laughs> so, um, I think ultimately what happens too, and I'm talking from personal experience for me, um, especially years back, was the comparison. So when we compare ourselves to other people, that of course does rob us of joy as well. And creativity does not have any bounds. What you create and how you create it, there are so many variations, options, and, the, and, and ultimately it's something that you created, literally with your own hands, um, is a form of creation. And so when we invite play, play into the creative process, we give ourselves permission to discover, to, to explore options and to um, just have fun, to not feel overwhelmed um, in and of self. Now, granted, you'll notice that I said like we need to um, 
make an effort to invite play because I do think that more often than not, we get in our own way, right? Um, so I know that to be true for me. Maybe it's not true for you guys, but it is true for me. And so when I tap into the play mindset, I tell myself nothing's wrong. There's no wrong answers. There's no right answers. Just explore, just have fun, just discover. And we often hear actually a lot of people say in different versions of however they say it, you know, Kiwi Lane has made scrapbooking fun again for me or Kiwi Lane has made card making fun again for me. And really what it was is that we're just sharing um, what we learned, which is to invite the play back into it. And we do provide a designer template tools that help facilitate play, that are a tool that is practical, simple, and help you to explore different ways that you can play. Because again, creativity is just taking components um, and re rediscovering what you can make with them. So, you know, it's, it's taking those existing elements, whatever those existing elements are, and you are forming them into some form of creation. So I hope that as you guys go throughout the rest of the events today, I know naturally you probably guys are gonna just have so much fun because how could you not have so much fun with all of that is planned for you guys? But I do hope that you really uh, think about inviting play into that, really allow, giving yourself permission to, to play to give play, because uh, we all deserve play in our life. It, like I said, there is no age limit to play. We all deserve play, some form or another. Actually, one of my favorite quotes that has really stuck with me more so lately than previous, you know, I, it's just as I come to understand this more about myself that I need to give myself permission to play, and I have been trying that more lately, and also I need to um, be open to inviting play sorry I'm having a thought process like just you know being open-minded to inviting play and let play play its part <laughs> play its part in the process but the quote the quote is it's a happy talent to know how to play right um and so hopefully that encourages you guys to think about that more do you give yourself permission to play do you invite play and um, and to not be too hard on yourself at the end of the day, right? In the sense of as long as you enjoy what you're doing and as long as you enjoy the creative process, then that's really what matters. And of course, to avoid any comparison of any kind, I think that's the other thing that just really um, makes my heart sad, <laughs> makes my heart sad. When I hear other people um, say, well, mine's just not as pretty as yours or mine is this, you know, I, mine's not as cute. And um, this comparison, and I'm like, well, did you have fun? Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. Then that's all that matters. And who's to say what is cute and who is to say what is not? And of course, everyone's at different levels of their journey, even in the creative process. I mean, gosh, you guys, this sounds like life right here, but it is true in any aspect of our lives. That is the truth. But so just remember to play to create. I promise that play is the key. Play is actually our paradigm and creativity is our passion. And then of course the connection of all of it is what um, is the pathway that leads us there between the play and the create. So Jody says, I am going to play all weekend. Well, maybe a few chores here and there. Good, you deserve it, Jody. <laughs> you deserve it. All right, so let's talk about some paper, uh, paper picking tips. Now, um, I'm sure you guys have plenty of paper stashes. Actually, I'm going to put in the comments here in a minute, um, just over onto our YouTube channel, some really awesome videos. If this is an area that maybe you would like more um, tips and tricks on, then I will post those in the comments, okay? So just let me know and I will post it. But I want to share with you guys two different ways because I think it's actually unfair to share any kind of paper tipping, paper picking tips when I'm using our own Kiwi Lane paper kits because we actually design our paper kits with this in mind, um, with you as the designer in mind as well, trying to make sure that when we create papers, whether that's the Kiwi Clubs or, or paper kits that are in our shop, that we already take these into consideration to make the designers aspect easier as far as, again, 
pulling on those existing elements to create something. And so there, there are some couple things that we keep in mind. So I'm gonna actually pull out, I didn't have a lot of kits, unfortunately, that were not used. So I have this uh, older card of Bella. And of, of course, you have to buy two <laughs> in that pack because if you, if you like to have double-sided background sheets, I always have to buy two. So I do have this one in my stash. It's definitely old, it's from like, 2015. So I'm going to walk you through when I get a, a kit like this, which is very much going to be the case for a lot of you. Sorry, did I miss some questions here? Okay, I think I'm good. Um, oh, uh, Lindsay says, I also have a prize for you to give away. Be sure to pick a winner during your live. Oh, Lindsay, can you please tell me? I didn't, you didn't tell me that. So do I just ask a question and give one away during the comments, please let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this kit and there's a couple rules. One, we recommend that you use five to six sheets of paper. Again, now I'm talking Kiwi Lane style. How many of you guys are familiar with Kiwi Lane? I should just not assume that you guys are all familiar with it. Hopefully by the end of this, this fun event that you guys have this weekend, you'll be familiar with it or at least find some ways that you can utilize it with some of your other go-to tools. Um, but I'm going to share some tips kind of on that concept. But the truth is these paper picking tips um, can help with any type of style that you might find yourself uh, creating with. And again, whether that is a card making or scrapbooking, paper crafting in general, I think these tips apply something to be uh, your mind and eye open to, all right? Okay, so we have this kit, right? And you open it up. They actually have a sticker sheet in this one, so I'm gonna put that to the side and only focus on the paper. So right away, you get a lot of different patterns in this. This is actually really cute. I'm glad I opened it up. I gotta find the right pictures to go with that. Okay, so you'll, you'll kinda see all of these papers. And the first step that I always do is to condense a paper kit. In other words, I start itemizing what I'm gonna use on the project that's at hand, right? Like what I'm currently working on. And then I set the other ones to the side. And again, to help me do that, five to six sheets of paper, you guys, all right? Is kind of the mental thing. Now that's for a two page spread. If you are a one pager, you will adjust the rules. There's no rules when it comes to anything like this, but it's uh, some guidelines. It's guidelines that have helped me and I hope that it helps you guys, okay? Um, okay. All right, so the first step, well, let me drill down five to six each of paper. We're gonna pick two for our background. We pick one for our main pattern, one for our supporting pattern, and then I usually pick an extra one for my photo mats, technically, that's it, five will do the trick. We say six, we kind of give that a suggestion of five to six, purely for the fact that depending on if you can take advantage, full advantage of your double-sided papers, sometimes it's not planned the best way as far as when they choose what patterns to put on what backs. Um, and so sometimes you have to th throw in that six to kind of accommodate for the loss of some double-sided sheets of paper. If you are going through some of your other stash that is not double-sided paper, then of course you want to probably up it to about eight or nine sheets. And that is not that you're gonna use all those papers, by the way. Often when I create a two-page layout with five sheets of paper, five double-sided sheets of paper, I can create a two-page spread and layer it because I tend to layer a lot. I like layering, not all the time. I don't layer all the time, but preference I love to layer I think it adds a lot of depth to your designs and um, and then I make one or two cards out of my scraps so if you had one single sheet sheets of paper for example and you were using like nine sheets because you were accommodating for not having back to back you will not use all of that paper by any means okay um, since they are double-sided. So Tracy says five to six or just different patterns since they are double-sided. Yeah, so let me walk you guys through it. So to start off with, what I always recommend is actually starting with your main pattern. And when we say main pattern, 
that is the pattern that absolutely catches your attention. There is no doubt that all of us, when we see a paper pack, there is at least one of those patterns that is like the thing that makes us even attracted to this kit in the first place, right? So this is harder <laughs> looking upwards. Maybe I should have done it downwards. But so right away, like this is super cute. Look how cute that is. So cute, okay? Um, polka dot, you could do a lot with polka dot. Maybe you're drawn to the stripe. I'm gonna kinda just pick out the ones that I'm drawn to. Oh, that's pretty. Right? Super pretty. And this is just, this is a lot of pattern pieces. I don't tend to use go to go for those ones, more for sentiment purposes. Um, okay, here's another one. That one has a lot of, huh. it's kind of one use, one purpose use there. Um, I'm not a big fan when it's one purpose use. I like to, like uh, options, but we can always, of course, utilize it for the background sheet here. And then there is this, this other flower pattern. So it looks like most of them are kind of these patterns. So just out of curiosity, just to show how different each of us are, and that's what's beautiful. Out of these three, this being one, this being two, and this pattern over here being three, like which one, if you saw them, were you like, oh, I love that sheet. And maybe not because you're like, I would never pick this paper out. <laughs> and that can be the truth too. So just out of curiousness, one, two, or three, let me know in the comments, you guys. So um, for me, I definitely was more attracted to this pattern. Like when I saw it, I was like, oh, I really like this pattern. That's a lot of fun, right? And so I'm going to go with that one on that. And this becomes the foundation, well, it really becomes what we're going to make all of our other decisions on. So luckily it's double-sided and has a pattern that could be, um, this, is, <laughs> this is what we refer to as a blender. Um, actually, this is a two-tone, all these termy things, but it does help. So two-tone meaning it uses two colors only in the color palette, it has white on top of pink. So two, two tones, you can have three tones where it uses maybe a yellow, blue, pink, but clearly this one has more of all of the color palettes represented in. So by starting with the main pattern, we're able to easily make our decisions uh, for our background sheets, for our supporting sheets, because we are going to build um, downwards at this point, right? Um, so with that said, now that I have a main sheet, I'm going to go to my supporting sheet. And what we mean by supporting is that you want a pattern that does not compete with your main sheet. It actually keeps your page more cohesive and not as overwhelming for your pictures as well. Because um, for me, the scrapbooking, the, the act of scrapbooking, the art of scrapbooking for me, it is a combined love for my photos and my memories, but also for my creative expression, um, for me to be able to take those memories and to personally add my creative expression into that. But I don't, it's not one or the other. Like for me, I don't do create scrapbooking just for the creative aspect and, or vice versa, just for a place for my photos to be, to be um, put away. You know what I mean? I enjoy both aspects of it. And so I really try to complement both aspects of it. Pick a winner however you want, Brandy says. Okay, sounds good. I will be processing that. Good to know. Okay. Um, so supporting patterns, they go hand. That's really what it is. You want to find a pattern that helps this one shine. Because again, we I'm thinking of layering in mind. So with those layer together, so again, usually that supporting is um, another pattern. And a lot of the supporting patterns are more general, like stripes and polka dots or sometimes chevrons or more geographic, like, you know, um, triangles or things like that. Like it's, it's kind of more supporting, but it is meant to help um, 
support. Support the main. The main pattern, support it so that you get that cohesive feel. And this is all that I do. Right here, I'm just simply layering them together to kind of get a vibe of how that would work and would do I feel like it would be a vibe that would be something creatively I would express, which is also why, again, all of us choose different patterns, right? Right. Um, could you share if, uh, how you would pick the papers when there are a lot of different background papers on the page map, like Brandy's October page map challenge? There are four different background layers before you put your pictures down. Sorry, I'm processing that red. I will uh, maybe try to clarify that. Or Brandy, I'm not quite sure what page map she did. So maybe Brandy can help us out with that too. All right. Okay, so here is another one. Look at that pattern. It completely changes the vibe though. It's super fun. It makes, reminds me of like lights, of course. Um, again, you may love this. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm, I'm just not a... I'm not a big fan of these type of papers, personally. Um, they, they feel one purpose use, and I'm not a big fan of that. And this one. So see how that vibe is changing. You see how each one of those supportings will change the vibe of your main one, right? Okay. And then this one is just title sheet, so we're gonna put that to the side. I mean, it is double-sided, so we might find a use for that, but, and then that one is just, again, that double-sided, which this could be um, a supporting, but I think they blend too much together. So this one, the reason I don't pick it is because I think that they, it's not supporting it. It's, it's uh, not really helping contrast or any kind of pop or any kind of thing. Um, okay. So Brandy says she'll come back to that. This one is really cute, but it definitely changes it to more of like a country feel for me. Um, so this one is really cute. And so if you wanted to pull on that gray that's being represented in this chevron, for example, that does help um, spotlight that a little bit, but it is really hard for me to see the little bit of cohesiveness. I feel like this has a very classy feel. Again, there's no right or wrong. You'll see this all the time in our samples. Um, you know, like for example, let me switch gears really quickly. Sorry, I feel, hopefully I'm not confusing y'all. Um, but I do wanna show you this. This is the same paper cut. This is a Cumulane paper cut, same papers. This up here was a layout that Shiloh designed. And you can see she's choosing these sides of the papers but then another complete different layout, same paper kit, and ultimately same color palettes, but really the vibe is distinct, right? So you can see that being contrast there. So it's all about your selections and which is why each of us will make different choices. Um, that's really fun. I'm trying to think what I think of Stripe with Chevrons, but it's really cute. Ultimately, I think this is the one that right off the bat, I was like, oh, I like that clean feel. I'm, I tend to be tried to keep mine a little bit more clean and simple. Um, again, I think that's just a personal preference, but and maybe I'm a little biased to polka dots. I don't know, but I do feel like that actually helped that supporting and that or that main pattern. So, um, so yeah. Um, okay. You're sending me something, Lindsay? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to catch up in your guys' comments and then also, Lindsay, okay. Just wanna, um... Oh, oh, two, okay, so she has, I see what you're saying. She has the background and the other thing and the other, okay. I will, I will go back here in a minute, Red, so I don't lose everybody's focus on what I'm doing. So we have our main and our supporting. And then we are going to pick now our background sheets. So now we're gonna to go to our background sheets before we talk about that fifth one, which we recommend for photo mats, but it doesn't have to be photo mats because that decision is based off of what we pick for our background sheets. So our background sheets, um, it, we recommend a subtle pattern. One, again, just for the fact that you're gonna allow that paper to work 
for you, literally work for you um, in the sense of setting that vibe and doing and showcasing, showcasing again the paper, which helps showcase your pictures. Um, so I just want to show you that really fast because often when we here, so this is a blender. And that's usually when the blender is when a, you have a texture pattern. You can use cardstock, by the way. Um, it's totally a preference. I personally love a little bit of blenders to mine because it does give a texture to your background um, and ultimately helps allow the other things feel really cohesive, these patterns cohesive. So let me show you this again. A blender is when you have, the, see how this is a light green on top of a green? It's not two-tone, otherwise it would be white and green. This is what we call a blender pattern, all right? And so that, that gives you that contrast. It gives you a little bit more of the, the pattern texture, but does not scream at you, right? So here, I'm gonna throw these back up here so we can see what we have picked, right? So we have supporting main, and now we're going to stick the blend or the background sheet behind the two because now what we're at what we're trying to see really quickly is does this color green give me the vibe that I want with my other main and supporting patterns so does it give me that pop off of those I don't think there's anything wrong with that that's definitely a little bit more of a springy color palette like if you wanted more of that color look I think that's really really pretty actually um this gray could work too so again that little bit of pattern is giving you the texture super cute that's really fun it could pull in the gray that definitely makes it a little bit more elegant versus spring so seeing how that just comes back um in different ones on that um, thanks, Ella Alexandra. Carlene, let me get some questions in here. Something I probably wouldn't have considered without seeing you just play it. Good, I'm glad it's helping you, Carlene. Okay, and so again, this is personal preference. Here, let me actually turn this one over. This is a wood background. See that? I don't think I would necessarily go that route with my main one that I picked purely for the fact that I don't feel like brown is being completely represented in my main pattern. Now, let's backtrack really fast. Let's say, well, which one of these? Let's say we picked these two for our main and our supporting, okay? Let's say we, that we went this route for our main and supporting. See, I feel like that dark actually does make these little dark pieces um, stand out more. And so you kind of get this new vibe going on. So that's really great too. Okay, so we have variations of options here. Now, um, of course the green is on the back of that dark. On the back of the gray, we have the versatility to choose pink. That definitely uh, brings it up as far as the soft pastel, more of a, a pretty, I think pretty is an adjective for it, um, feel. It kind of gives that a little bit more, right? It is really pretty though. It, it definitely stands true to its thing. Again, maybe if I was, it just depends on what memories you're scrapbooking. If I, I think wedding pictures, I think this paper line was made for wedding, but I, I think of like, really adorable infant pictures. Um, if you had pictures where maybe pink was being represented in the clothes that you were wearing or your grandma vintage pictures, how pretty would that be? Some black and white pictures on top of that would be so pretty, right? Yeah, I like the pink too. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Just, I think you guys get the hint, but I really want to show you the, the how quickly that background sheet plays an effect on the mood in which you're setting for your project. Um, this one, it's hard to see, but it actually does have, I think you can kind of see it. It has a little bit of a chevron. I'll be honest, blacks are hard to print, um, which is probably why that contrast is not coming quite through. Um, but there is a little bit of contrast and I do like that. Again, I like that little bit, but see this black, it, 
again, it's just kind of the same reason why I wouldn't have chose the, the, the brown wood pattern. Um, it doesn't quite do that trick for me. I'm trying to think which ones in here would be with black. Well, let's just take back, let's take back these ones. And let's try the, so that dark brown or that black would actually work with either one of those. All right. Two tones, by the way, I don't necessarily, I don't mind using those as my backgrounds as well. They can tend to be, again, a little distracting and take away from those layers. No wrong or right. Actually, probably two tones are where I would pull it in for whatever it's worth red on those uh, second back layers. Let me, let me go over that. I'm going to completely address your question all on its own. Here's a two-tone too. So again, it's white on brown. And those would could be really good for those secondary backgrounds too red, but we're going to go over that. That's actually not bad either. Okay. I think we all liked kind of the pink, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back and just say that's the case. Um, of course, with like the Echo Park packs or, or these packs, um, it just depends on what pack you're purchasing. I shouldn't say that they're all that way, but that's why we all tend to unfortunately buy two packs. And then we end up having lots of extra patterns that we're like, Oh, I'm kind of done with this paper now, but it's because you'll need a second pack to pull in that secondary background sheet or at least background sheet. I think the beauty of it is you can already kind of tell. I'm, I'm, I could quickly put together, oh, probably three or four kits. And that's what I do. I pick out my paper. So I take apart my kits. Anytime I get, you know, kits like this and um, I'll, t I'll, I'll, of course, buy two if, cause I have to, <laughs> to get my need for, um, that second sheet because I like to do two backgrounds, a double, you know, so that's where your four sheets will come into play. So you have two for your background, one for your main and one for your supporting. And then at this point, that fifth sheet is either for photo mats. If you like to mat your photos, you can pull in cardstock again. Actually, this is more where I like to use my cardstock is for matting my pictures. I don't always mat my pictures, um, but even if I don't, I always pick that fifth one for the sake of having it handy because again, that's where some extra photo mats, which is what I consider that, by the way, read these back sheets that you're calling backgrounds. I actually consider them more photo mat placements. Um, anyways, and so I always just pull it in because you also could use it for extra layering or accessories or different things. And you want to make sure that you have that option because the truth is with the double sided paper, you should have plenty to choose from. So we have another pink being represented here. Oh, I lost my background. So this is what I'm talking about. It gets complicated, which is why I'm giving you guys this in real time. Cause these are absolute things you should be like kind of seeing. Unfortunately, if this is on the back of our background and we just chose pink for our background, well, now we have a lot of layering pinks going on. So we're gonna have to, we want, we're gonna wanna take care of, we wanna take advantage of this pink, but then we're gonna also have that pink. Um, and we could use some of these for titles. Cause again, there's no way you're gonna use this full sheet. Well, depending on what you design. So maybe you can use one of these for your titles or again, you lose your background in this case on that. So one more sheet here. I need a good one that just gives me more colors. So I love that. That gives me that teal representative. And then it gives me some of that gray, but then it will be polka dot with polka dot in that case. I'm not doing this to overwhelm you. I'm, tr I'm truly trying to show you guys some guidelines that you can hopefully follow as you try to use up your paper stash. Um, everything, <coughs> excuse me. Um, these are all backgrounds. Let me see. I could, I could pull this one in because 
I probably would just make a mental note, okay, well, I'm losing the back of this one, so I'm gonna pull this one in. And then I would personally probably, based off of the patterns that I just showed you guys, I probably would pull in a white cardstock for my photo mats at this point. So I would take all of my elements, because I know now I have that extra sheet, so I'm gonna utilize these three sheets to help with any kind of layering, embellishment, um, you know, design of whatever layout you're doing, plus the two background sheets that I'm gonna build on. And Tracy, no, I don't always do double layout. It really depends on the event that I'm scrapbooking. So if I happen to have two pictures just hanging around that I took that are, are an event of their own, then I'll do a single page. Um, I do often still take or have, I still often have one picture from one event that is in of itself its own thing. So in that case, I'll do a one pager. Um, but usually when I take pictures, like if I'm at a party or if I'm at a, a, a well, traveling, you take lots of pictures, but you know, something specific that I'm trying to document, um, then I mentally make a note to at least get for me at least get six and I say at least but then I try to go up till like 10 or 11 and then what I'll do is I'll take pictures throughout the event sometimes I'll just take it early on in the event and then I'll put my phone away so that I can just enjoy the moment and know that I have pictures and then I can go through those pictures when I go through my pictures though if it was just like a one event like a birthday party I will actually trim down my pictures to only, so no more than 11 if I can, again varies, and nothing less than six. <laughs> so I'll go through and I'll, I'll delete any ones that are pretty much the same, um, all of that stuff, but I don't do that right at the event because again, I think that's also something very important that as scrapbookers we can remember that, yeah, pull out your phone, document it, absolutely document it, um, but then at a certain point, put your phone away and just live in the moment. You know what I mean? So those are mental things that I've actually started to really try to embrace as I'm out and about with my family or we're making memories to, to kind of capture it. And when, you know, again, if something really great happens, I'll pull out my phone and I'll be like, hold on, and then I'll take the picture. But for the most part, if it's kind of capturing the whole thing, I'll only capture the bits of it. Um, so yes. Okay. All right, guys. So what I do at this point, this becomes a layout kit in my mind. And I then, I actually use like a page protector because we all have like 12 by 12 page protectors. And I'll just stick that in a page protector. If I have photos in mind, then I stick those photos in my page protector. And I have a section where I keep my finished kits. I'm, I'm pointing to my wall over there. <laughs> all together because then I know I already planned these out. I already have the paper picked out. I have my pictures picked out and they're, I have this bag. You can put it in a bag, but the reason why I mentioned page protector because everyone's like, well, where do I get 12 by 12 bags, right? But, um, you know, you can use your page protector and then you can use it again once you go put it in your album. But I have these pictures. I'm just going to show you. I don't think they would actually go with it, but, um, so this would become a kit for me. And I would put it up on the, you know, I have a section where I just have paper stored and I have a section where I have actual layout kits stored two different places because when I have time to sit down to scrapbook, um, I'm not spending my time thinking about what to scrapbook. I'm just scrapbooking, I'm just grabbing a kit and my picture's are already with it, my paper's already with it, and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do that project. I still have lots to choose from, so I still have variety there. Um, so that's always nice. Otherwise, if there are specific papers that I wanna use, then I'll go and I'll have to pick out my paper, do what I just showed you, find my pictures, and then do that process, which is fine. That's of course the same thing. It's just having the option for two is really, really helpful. So I recommend putting together little kits because that process, which I just showed you, does take time and it does take away from the creative process, the creative steps, um, which a lot of us look forward to actually getting to that step, right? Where we actually can sit down and actually start taking our current, you know, um, these current elements 
right? And bringing them into an existence to creating with them. Okay, so as I mentioned though, this is all that's left still of this kit. So I think really quickly I could go back through and say, oh, well, they mixed up now. I have two of everything. But you could for sure out of one of those two packs that we so con commonly see with the paper companies, oh, you could easily create probably four, four layout kits out of that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly put together what I think. Mine as well, I have the kits out anyways, and then I can stick them over in my finished pile and I'll take a picture. Um, okay, so really quickly, Red, let me go through what you just asked and let me get everybody up to speed on what you're asking, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, all right? So Red asked about this layout that Brandy just did a challenge with, which is super fun. Um, definitely gets me in the holiday spirit, but of course this sketch can be anything um, also other than Halloween. So you'll look at this sketch and you'll see that we have the background sheet, which I believe is this gray. That is your 12 by 12 sheet, right? The canvas basically that all of these other layers are building on top of. But then she has this secondary background, um, the white, which looks like it's probably, it probably looks like a 10 by 10. Um, now again, this can be a secondary background, however you wanna term that. It can be uh, a photo mat. Um, it's just really a large photo mat to, to, to bring focus to the center of your uh, pictures. It's a secondary background too. So, so on that case, so this is what I tend to do when I see designs like this, which are so fun, by the way. You just have to have more paper because now you're talking that you need two sheets for this, unless you cut those apart. <laughs> um, and was deceiving. In other words, you cut a 12 inch strip or a two inch strip across the top and a three inch strip across the bottom and you did not let it be a full 12 by 12. By the way, you could do that and then you would put a six inch in between the two and it would look like this when you're finished, but it would be not, you would not be using a full 12 by 12 to accomplish these. But if you did, oh, my battery, it just died. My battery just died. If you did, um, you would need two for your background. You would need two for those um, secondary baselines. So I'm gonna quickly go through that paper. Hopefully I'm not, I don't know where my time is. And then I do need to pick a winner. Um, can someone let me know on my time? Lindsay or Brandy, sorry. My thing just died and I can't, oh, it will come back up, but. Let's, let's backtrack and say we did that. Then same thing, I would still keep in mind because you don't know what you're scrapbooking until you sit down and scrapbook. So let me take this for example, the kit that we just put together and how maybe that would play out if I did want to use that sketch as my inspiration. Then that probably would play out um, in this kind of form. Again, I'll do my best to try to explain it without actually creating with it. These would be your two background sheets. Sorry, I really wish my, my um, it will, it'll take a minute, but my computer will come back up so that we have that sketch. There we go, okay. <laughs> Just kidding, it wants a little bit more time to, to, to think about it. Yep, it wants more time. All right, so let's say these are our background sheets. I'd actually probably go a little bit busier on those backgrounds because I'm in, in the um, top layers. So those white secondary baselines, that's where maybe you could do this kind of look, right? Guys, I'm gonna have to just scrap up that sketch now and then walk you guys through that here because and then this main pattern, 
you can make that be, you saw that that main pattern, that Halloween, was being represented as a strip right behind. It's really hard without cutting the paper and or seeing the sketch. Um, so you would want a little texture or a little movement character and the patterns bring character to your page. So I would probably stick something like that. But then you also noticed you had those scallops running across the edges, which is maybe where another pattern would come into play, right? <laughs> I can't see, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna just have to scrapbook this. But overall, the takeaway read, hopefully it helps you, is that you, I would just pick Whatever is closest to your pictures, right? So when we talk about the background being a subtle pattern, like a blender or a two-tone pattern, it's because you don't want to overwhelm your pictures, right? Your pictures are laying on top of this background sheet, and then you're building up, again, Kiwi style, a frame around it. So whatever is closest to your pictures, you don't want it to necessarily scream you know, like de derailing you from, you know, feeling like this whole memory is one component, right? So the pictures are part of the design. The design is part of the memory. It all works together. So I guess with that in mind, what I would do is that that 10 by 10 square, that second um, background, I would make sure that that one is the least busiest pattern the background itself the background itself so like when we had that 12 by 12 you could actually go with a more busier pattern in that case because you're going to bring you're going to tone it back down and then you're going to have your pictures here so a lot of times when i see those kind of designs that is really fun to pull in a busier pattern that naturally you would not have done um, with the other guidelines i was just showing you but because you're pulling in that second background, it's gonna do the job of toning it down to allow the pictures, which are pretty much centered here in the center of it, to shine. So that could even be fun where, again, you take advantage of, where's that stripe go? It could be whether a busy or two-tone like this, this one, or it could be, where did my stripe go? Oh, there it is. It could be even a stripe. See how much character that would bring? Again, you could have stripe poking through on the 12 by 12 version, and then you're calming it back down with the, 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 the more soft, subtle patterns, and that's gonna tone it back down. I actually liked the other one, but I do think it's fun to throw in some of those for the background. Or again, you could have cardstock like a, a nice black or something like that, giving you the contrast between the two background sheets. So again, this one would be your 12 by 12. This would be your, the 10 by 10 or strips. If you only had one sheet, you could still accomplish it. So hopefully that helps um, explain your question. Does anyone else have anyone, any other questions for me, let me know. I do have another live, so I'm gonna probably have to let you guys. Okay, so as far as a giveaway, gosh, this is, I, I was not thinking because I was thinking about everything else. My brain was not thinking about the giveaway. So as far as a giveaway goes, um, let me know in the comments. Hmm. Oh, this one's gonna be a tricky question. The first comment that I see that tells me what, um, what company is this paper? So in other words, it was an old paper line, a certain product um, as far as the company goes. And I kind of mentioned it at the very beginning, the very, very beginning. Does anybody remember what this paper was? No, not Echo Park, Trisha. I did mention Echo Park, but this one is not Echo Park. I did mention the Echo Park is kind of the same things as far as their kits go. You're gonna to have to run into it. Cartabella, yes. Trisha, that is that is correct. It's Cartabella. 
Okay, Trisha, you are the lucky winner. I'm not quite sure what you have to do. Uh, make sure to email Lindsay or Brandy uh, for this event, and I'm sure they'll hook you up with your giveaway. Thank you guys so much for joining. Again, please remember to invite play. Literally invite it. Um, be open to it, invite it, and to just have fun, to enjoy, enjoy the time that you guys have, that you set aside to create play and of course connect today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this event and have a lovely Saturday. All right guys, talk soon. Bye now.